Hi, it's Mr. James here from Brown Hills Ormiston Academy. This is Year 9 ICT and it's Lesson 4. What you're going to need is a paper and pen to complete this lesson. So if you want to pause the video, then do so now and then we'll be able to continue with the lesson. What I'd like you to do is draw a similar diagram to the one that's on the screen now. So it's got demographics in the middle and then it's got six circles around the edge. It doesn't really need to be that design if you don't want it to be. It just basically needs to be a mind map with demographics in the middle with space to write around the um, outside of it. Today's learning objective is to understand how to create a leaflet using the most suitable software. We're going to start off with a multiple choice question. The design brief you're working on asks for a website with a blue background and a dark red font for the text. This could be a problem because A. The colour of blue requested is subject to copyright. B. The dark background will increase the time to download the whole web page. C. Some monitors will not show the correct dark blue colour. D. Some colourblind people will find it difficult or impossible to read the text. So is it A, B, C or D? The answer is D. Some colourblind people will find it difficult or impossible to read the text. That's because they can't see the red font type in front of the blue background. Let's have a look at the diagram that we've drawn. It's going to have demographics in the middle and then it's got six bubbles around it with space to write and we're going to make some notes about each one now. Let's go through some theory for today's lesson. We're going to be talking about target audience. The first section is about gender. Background colours may need to be appropriate to different gender groups. It might however be best to use gender neutral colours. Typically blue, pink and yellows have been used in the past. However, some might see this as actually being quite outdated. Age is our next section. The presentation method selected and the content must be appropriate to the target age group. So if we're aiming something at the elderly, we need to consider um, their age. If we're aiming something at the younger age, then we might change the language, which is completely different to what we would use for the elderly. Third one is language. Numbers are universal, but some audiences may not have English as their first language, so lots of text may cause some problems. This is when we need to consider whether we need to have some sort of translation available. The next three sections we're going to look at for target audience are economics, location and accessibility. For economics, the message or product of the information needs to be targeted at the correct income group or accessible to all if appropriate. For location, the location could be internal, external, local, national or international, therefore the content may need to change accordingly. If the content is to be viewed online, there might be a limit on their connection. For example, they might not have 5G and that might be due to the speed of the internet as well. And then finally, accessibility. There needs to be consideration made for any disability such as providing uh, subtitles for videos or the ability to increase the font size. Some pages, some web pages are even dyslexic friendly. Now here are some audience and accessibility issues with how to overcome the, uh, the problems identified. So we've got colour blindness. Now sometimes we need to change the font size and the colours need to be um, the correct fadings to make sure that the people with colour blindness can see it properly. If people are blind, they need to make sure that the text is converted to audio. If people are deaf, unable to hear, it, there might need to be subtitles on video clips. And people who have got learning disabilities, it might be that they've got to make sure that the website is sim it's a simple layout. Even on a leaflet that we're designing, it needs to be a simple layout. People who have disabilities may have special needs that require the designer of IT products to think about their products 
which will enable access for all. Below are bullet points about how to overcome some of these issues. One for example is people with dyslexia will benefit from a simple to read typeface such as Vedana. People will benefit with a speak option. There will also be subtitles that can be put on videos. A really good function is the use of Google Translate. So if a letter is put on a website, maybe for a school, and English isn't the first language spoken by some of the students, the letter can easily be translated so that it can be understood. Let's go through this task. A retro games company would like a leaflet designed to give out to customers. It will have the company logo at the top and consist of information about the company's products and reviews of the games. Which Microsoft software would you definitely not use and why? If you want to pause the video here, write your answer down and then we'll go through the answer. Here's the answer. The Microsoft software that I would definitely not use would be Excel. And the reason being is that it's used primarily for storing data. It's also used to present data like charts and graphs. And it's probably the least effective software to design a leaflet with. A student did attempt to do it last year using Excel, but it was nowhere near as good as the products that were made with Publisher and Word. Other software issues that might occur if you used Access, again, it's primarily used to store data, so it's not its main function. Um, Word is primarily used mainly just for text, however you could design it using um, word processing software and PowerPoint again it's it possible but the, the main purpose of PowerPoint is to present information to an audience not to design a leaflet on it. Let's go into a bit more detail about how to design a leaflet as that is this week's task. On the right, this is an example of a leaflet that was created by a Year 11 student. Can you identify three positives of the design? The first one being is that there are bold colours used. So they've got a green um, font type with a black background. It's a simple design, so they've got the treatment and the prices on the left-hand side with a logo on the right and information about where the company is on the bottom right-hand corner. It's also quite eye-catching, so the logo matches in with the font colour and overall it's a very pleasant leaflet that's been designed. What we'd normally do if we were designing a leaflet is that we would produce a wireframe or a prototype, so i.e. a very simple layout of what it would look like. So on the left hand side we've got just a basic word document with shapes put on it. We've got a circle and we've got rectangles to show where information would go. We've then used an actual price list just to demonstrate how the layout's going to look. And this is what all designers would do and this is what you're going to need to do when it comes to your coursework. We're going to continue this week with designing a product and the information about this is found as it has been for the other weeks on the school website. So if you go on the school website, go to student home learning, go to newsletter nine and I think there's a link underneath that directly to the IT project. Then you can have a look at the information in a bit more detail. The scenario is the same as it has been for the last few weeks you're working for a new business called Progress Retro Games. You supply the games online and also at the Internet Cafe. And your job is to promote the products to try and increase sales. Three games that we're trying to promote this month are Tetris, Pac-Man and Space Invaders. The three tasks that we've done already are logo, web page interface and business card. If you haven't attempted those yet, then go back onto YouTube, have a look at the videos, or go back to the newsletter and see how to um, complete those tasks. We're looking at the leaflet today about advertising the games of the month. The success criteria for the leaflet must include the logo, the contact details, and featured games. 
if you want to have a look at the success criteria of the three other um, tasks that we've done so far then have a look on this page also so finally here is the overall success criteria for the leaflet some things to think about when you're doing your design the first is that it needs to include a logo design ideally the logo design that you've used or made in previous weeks it needs to include the company contact details and those details are listed below it must also include a review of the three games the thing that you can't do is use a template that exists already on publisher or word what i'd like you to do is open up word or publisher just use a a4 landscape design and split your leaflet up into three sections and i'll show you an example in a second the the design should ideally as i've said be on publisher or you can do it on word if you can't do it on either of those two packages then just attempt to draw it that's not a problem you can either take a picture or you can send me the file as some other students have done already and the address is at the bottom of this page good luck with your designs here's a design that a student has done you've got the logo in the top left hand corner you've got details in the middle and then you've also got a review of the three games on the right hand side this particular student has used a, um, a decorative border and you can see the lines that make up the the page which has been done on publisher have a great week and i look forward to receiving your work from you